Second edition. Well done, sir. I wanted to talk to you a little about the section called Religion and Civilizations. It must be a little dicey to talk about religion in a way that is acceptable for use in schools. I mean, there's going to be a wide range of religious beliefs in the classroom where you are read. You are supposed to remain neutral on this sort of thing, yeah? How do you frame religion in relationship to your overall topic, civilizations? Religion is an important aspect of civilization. In many civilizations, both in the past and in the present, religious beliefs are one way a civilization defines and describes itself. Religion also influences people's values and actions. So it's important for us to learn about religions. Learning about different religions allows us to understand the civilizations to which each of these religions belonged. That shouldn't upset too many people. But as a religious person myself, I must admit that I'm a little leery about the idea of looking at religion just to understand a civilization. I mean, religion is pretty important to people, but I guess you're limited to how much you can say about religion and still maintain your neutrality. Tell me, what's your view on why we have religion in the first place? Human beings have always asked what we call big questions. You have probably asked them too. What do you mean by big questions? Oh, why am I here? Why do bad things happen? How was all this created? What's the difference between right and wrong? What happens to me after I die? <laughs> wow, those are big questions. They are important questions too, don't you think? Human beings like to have answers to their questions. They like to have answers to their questions? Maybe if the question is, when's dinner? Aren't these questions a little weightier than that? Um, wouldn't it be more accurate to say that human beings need to answer these questions? I mean, the answers will change everything. How can you not answer them? Don't you think that these questions and the answers to them are hugely important? It seems like they might be the most important questions we can ask. Having answers makes us feel more secure. That's it. Security. You realize that people aren't wrestling with big questions because they are on a quest for security, right? It's a search for meaning and purpose. Any security, if it's gained at all, is just a byproduct of the search for the big answers to the big questions. How do you answer the big questions? These big questions cannot be answered the same way as ordinary questions can be. Ordinary questions? What do you mean by ordinary? For example, science tells us that water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. This is based upon creating a hypothesis and then using experiments to discover if our original ideas were correct. So by ordinary, you mean questions that result in answers that you can prove using the scientific method. You're right, the answers to the big questions can't be proven like H2O questions. With religion, people have to accept answers that are based on non-scientific evidence. Yes, they do, but that's not really a problem with the questions, is it? The problem is with the method. Your scientific evidence is limited. It's limited to physical things and events that happen in the realm of physical things. Religions are looking for answers that go beyond the material. You can't get very far studying the stars with a dissection tray and a microscope. These are the wrong tools. Science is the wrong tool to determine the meaning of life. Or do you think that science is the only legitimate tool in search of any truth? All truth? Okay, where were we? Um, oh yes, you said that ordinary questions are the ones for which the answers are based on science and the answers to the big questions are non-scientific. Are you implying that the answers to the big questions are not as good as the ordinary ones? 
like they're just sort of made up? In effect, people have to accept them based on their beliefs. Faith. Well, that's not exactly true, is it? Even though the answers might be non-scientific, that doesn't mean they're non-rational. Sure, there's an element of faith, but there is also a significant element of reason involved in religion. I mean, it's reasonable to conclude that there is a god or gods behind the creation of the universe, just like it's reasonable to conclude that there isn't. But there's another thing about your word choice. I noticed you consistently use the term us when speaking of knowing scientifically, and the word people when speaking about believing. I thought it was interesting how you distance yourself and consequently your young readers from the act of believing. <laughs> I'm beginning to suspect your neutrality, but let's move on. Why do we have so many different religions? Different faiths, different answers. Could you elaborate? There are many religions in the world, and each one has different answers to the big questions. <laughs> Which one is right? Which one is right? No one religion has the right answers, because the big questions have no scientifically provable answers. Did I hear you right? You didn't say that you can't know who is right. You said you can't be right if the answers aren't scientifically provable. That doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. If, if there's a right answer, but it can't be proven to be right, isn't it right anyway? All religions answer the questions differently, so on one question, some religion might be closer than others. That's logical, isn't it? I mean, if one religion teaches you to love your enemy, and the other one teaches you to eat your enemy, they can't both be equally true. They say opposite things. I think I understand your problem. You actually believe that something isn't true unless it's proven scientifically. But you can only believe that if you believe that reality is physical. Are you saying that reality is nothing but physical? Be careful, however you answer that question, <laughs> you will be making a scientifically unprovable claim in response to a big question. That's okay, you don't have to answer. You already did anyway. You're as bad as those religious people. You realize that you are not nearly as neutral as you think? Whether we like it or not, we all answer the big questions. My concern is for the students who might read this section, especially those who don't have teachers who can guide them through your non-scientific beliefs. What do you say to a grade eight student who's thinking about the big questions? You aren't really going to be allowed to discourage participation in religion. In Canada today, there are many different religions. If you were looking for a religion to belong to, you could find out what the different religions say about the big questions. Then you could choose the religion with the answers that you are most comfortable with, or that fit best with what you already think. Well, at least you're consistent. Since they are all equally false, it doesn't matter what religion you pick, or the criterion by which you pick it. I understand that you think you are being equally fair to all religions, but you are actually being equally unfair. People are looking for truth and meaning, and they believe they can find it. So we can't just shop for a religion like we do for shoes and pick the pair that fits. If truth and meaning exist, we have to conform to it, not it to us. How do you suggest we deal with people who have a different religion? Even if you had a different religion than your friends, that probably would not matter too much. In fact, you could probably learn something from each other. I thought you would say that. It's fine to have a religious belief, but don't take it too seriously. I suppose that's your picture of religious tolerance. I think that the only way to have true tolerance is to take each other's beliefs very seriously, even yours. Wouldn't the picture of tolerance be more like a materialist such as yourself, talking with a Christian and a Muslim, over a good cup of coffee and listening 
and disagreeing, but enjoying the company and the conversation and the coffee, all the while respecting the sincerity and the strength of each other's beliefs. Wouldn't this be a better picture to present to grade eight students? For that to happen, you'd have to step down from your position as final arbiter of truth and admit that you're just like the rest of us, trying to understand the world around you. Unless we take this posture, nobody's going to learn anything from anybody. It's been nice uh, talking to you. I look forward to the third edition. Maybe there'll be some revisions? <laughs>